Good day, everyone. It's Chef P. Today we're making mall pretzels. So let's take a look at our mise en place for the day. And I've been very, very impressed with uh, all the submissions that have been coming into the Instagram account on You Guys Cooking, showing the mise en place first. And that's very, very important. So mise en place, of course, is a French term that tells us about everything being in its place before we start. And anytime you're cooking, it's important to get all those things together first. So let's look at what we have here today. Okay, so for the actual dough part, okay, so for the dough part, we've got flour, brown sugar, table salt, and uh, you've got your active dry yeast here and warm water, okay? So then after that, once we make that dough, then we're going to dip it in a solution of baking soda and water. And that's what gives it that beautiful little brown shininess uh, to it. And then at the end, after they finish baking, we're going to brush it with melted butter and we're going to put on uh, coarse salt, okay? So I've got coarse kosher salt here at home. And uh, so we're gonna be uh, doing it that way. You could also put a cinnamon sugar topping on it. Some people like to put garlic in their butter and then brush it that way. You could top it with poppy seeds. You could top it with um, sesame seeds, anything you really like. But we're gonna go with the classic here today. The tools that I don't have here with me today that would be very, very useful in this would be a pastry brush. Okay, so if you have a pastry brush, great, but I'm gonna show you how to deal with it without the pastry brush. And uh, the other thing that you could use is a, a, a bench scraper or a pastry scraper would be very important too. So let's get ready and make the dough. So the recipe that I'm giving you is a regular recipe. I'm actually making half of that. So I'm cutting the recipe in half. So everything that I'm doing here, you will do double. If you follow the recipe, it should give you about 12 pretzels. If you want six pretzels, then obviously make it, uh, make it less. So we're gonna start off with warm water. Okay, so I've got here three quarters of a cup of really warm water. And so ideally we're looking for, for the growth of the yeast, we're looking for room temperature water. We're, I go a little bit warmer than that because the container that it's in needs to warm up as well. And I find that when I put the water in, it'll, it'll, it'll cool it down. And also when we start adding it to here, this bowl holds, the, um, holds temperature really well and it tends to be a little on the cool side. So I like to go a little bit higher. I can't go too high because if I go too high, I can kill my yeast and I don't wanna do that. So once again, we're using these packages and these packages are very, uh, very popular in this time of isolation. I haven't seen some in a couple of weeks. So I'm actually, I've asked permission to get into the school. I'm going to see if I can get access and go get some of that yeast at school. Otherwise, you guys probably saw last week, I was talking about making a sourdough starter. I'm on day seven of that sourdough starter. If you check Instagram, I'll show you where we're at with that starter. But that is a leavening agent as well that we can use. And it, it collects the natural yeasts out of the sky and just starts the fermentation process. And you can use that to make bread and stuff. So I'm going to use that in the coming videos. But just for uh, simplicity, we're going to use uh, this active dry yeast. And hopefully you still have some around. So in this warm water, what I want to do is dissolve that package. I'm using actually a half package here because... I used a half for something else and I'm just doing a, uh, a half recipe here. Okay, so uh, if you're doing the full recipe, you need the full packet, otherwise you can use half. This stuff does not last forever. There's usually a uh, expiry date on it. And this is one of those things where, yeah, after a while it just won't work anymore. We need to feed this and it feeds on sugar. So today we're using uh, brown sugar. All right, so we're gonna use a tablespoon of that. Okay, so I'm gonna put that in there. And you may have noticed, and some of you may have noticed at school, and I know we only started cooking in the grade 11 classes, uh, but you may have noticed a lot of people said, oh my God, there's bread in your, uh, in your brown sugar, or there's a bagel in your brown sugar. Uh, somebody dropped this here, sir, and what's going on? And, and basically what this does is it helps keep the brown sugar soft. Okay, so brown sugar is just basically white sugar with molasses added, but if you leave it, it will harden. If you have brown sugar at home and it's hardened already, if you slice an apple, put it in the container with there, it'll soften everything back up. And once you get it back to that, you can throw a slice of bread in there. The bread will not go bad in that environment, which is amazing. And it'll keep it soft all the way through. So that's it. What we're going to do is we're going to uh, add the salt now too. Okay, so we're looking for one teaspoon of salt. Okay, and again, I'm doing the half recipe, right? 
So I'm just going to go with one teaspoon. There we go. And I'm just going to stir that around. And what you'll start to see is that um, once it gets activated, so what we're doing is activating this yeast. Um, when you bite it in that little package, it's sort of in a position where it just kind of in stasis. It just sort of sits there. Okay, so in time, we want to wake that back up, and we do that by providing it the elements of fat tom, which is that, a little bit of time, some temperature, uh, some moisture, and some food, which is the sugar. Okay, so I'm going to let this sit for a couple of minutes, and it'll start to, start to foam, okay, and, and that's what we want, and you're going to have that smell of beer sort of uh, permeating through the air, which is great. Okay, so... Um, we're going just for this for the speed of this exercise here and, and on the video and not to have you sit there and have to watch yeast Do its thing, <laughs> but the longer you can wait the better it is I have here two cups of flour yours will obviously be four if you've got bread flour great if you don't Okay, and it might show up as strong flour or something to that effect um, But all-purpose flour is fine as well if you decide that you want to put some whole wheat flour in there, it's always nice to mix it with some white flour, just so it's not so sandy when you eat it. Okay, the white flour helps to just keep it a little bit of that, that moistness, which is nice. Okay, so I've actually got some foaming happening here already, but ideally, if you can wait about 10 minutes, that would be wonderful. Okay, so. I'm gonna take that, I'm gonna put this in here. Going to give this a last little mix here and you'll see it, it it kind of fits the same <laughs> the same mold as making bread or whatever it's just slightly different with the type of sugar that we're using and we're going to pop that in there there we go and then with a wooden spoon i always like to start with a wooden spoon i wouldn't go with my hands just quite yet and i'm just going to start to mix that together and you'll see that it starts to come together quite nice, like a dough. And when I get to the point where it looks like I can handle it, I will absolutely start to take it to the table and knead it. Now, kneading helps develop the gluten, and the gluten is what gives it that nice, springy, cushy, elasticy kind of um, texture, and we want that. And you'll see that these pretzels are way better than the ones that you'd pick up at a football game or whatever. Although those are fun and cool and stuff, but I really, really like these. And when we make these at school, they tend to be pretty popular. So I've got this basically blended together. Now I'm going to move it to the, to the surface. Drop this down here like this. And I'm going to try to take it out everything that I can here. Because we're going to use this bowl again to let it sit in there and, uh, and rise for the next hour. So, I'm just, again, so <laughs> we covered this before, but if this is your first time watching the bread uh, piece, um, you can use your palm. Some people like to get in there and get their fingers all in and it gets all caked up in your hands. Uh, I don't like that feeling and I don't find it's good for the, for the dough either. It brings it apart. You don't want to do that. So, you're just pushing through and then folding it over. And then continuing to do that. Now, if you find that it's a little sticky and you don't have excess here, you could throw in a little bit, uh, a little bit more flour. But I wouldn't go too, too crazy. This dough is actually one of those types of doughs that it will have a little bit of a stickiness to it. And that when you actually go to roll, um, when you actually go to roll the pretzels, you want a little bit of the stickiness. And you'll see what I mean when we do that. All right. So. Continue, 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 and I'm absorbing everything that's on this table. Now, I feel like I need just a light little dusting. I thought I was okay, so I'm just going to, just a little bit, like that, just so that my hands don't really stick to it, but again, I don't want it caked in flour. There should be a light stickiness to it, a little bit of moisture in it, and that's what we want. We talked about this before, um, but depending on the type of day that we have, if it's a humid day, if it's a dry day, um, you may find that dough absorbs 
more liquid on certain days than, than others. So there's some days you won't need extra flour, some days you will, depending on what the humidity levels are in your house or the time of the year. So I'll continue to do that. Now you could do this in a stand mixer if you wanted to, um, but that's it. And then when we get this nice dough coming together, and it's looking pretty good here. All right, so the one ingredient I didn't show you on the mise en place, was a little bit of oil and I like to use the oil inside the bowl that I'm going to let this sit in. All right and so I will show you that. So we're going to take this same bowl, it's okay you can use the same one. I'm just going to put a little bit of oil. If you've got vegetable oil it's great, if you have olive whatever and just a teeny bit. All I really want to do is coat the outside of this dough ball and let it um, let it rise without sticking and becoming part of the bowl. So I'll put it in here. I'll just make sure it gets coated like that. Okay, so there it is. There's the dough. And I'm going to put that on my counter. And if I can let it sit for an hour, that'd be wonderful. What I can do is put a piece of, um, a piece of plastic on it, but don't seal it too, too tight. Or if you do seal it tight, just poke a hole in the top. Or you can put a dishcloth on it. Okay, so you could just... Do that, let it sit there for the hour, and then uh, we'll do that. So I think because my skills in YouTube are not great, this is gonna be a part one, part two kind of situation. So I'm gonna end this at part one, and we will uh, pick up part two in about an hour. See you.